Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Acuma Power Hour, being brought to you by our friends over at Sales Boomerang Mortgage Coach. My name is Peter Benjamin. I am the president of Acuma. I want to be the first to welcome you to this afternoon's session. Uh, today, you know, we're going to dive into a you know a pretty great topic. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm really excited to sit back and learn from some of the best, where we can really focus on how we can keep our our members really wealthy and healthy. And I think the financial health is really important in today's market and how we navigate changing times. You know, today, Andrew, Alex, and Dave are going to walk us through various topics that where we can really focus on that true financial health. First off, you know, before we dive too much further, I, I want to say a big thank you to our friends over at Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach for one, sponsoring today's uh, Power Hour, but two, being such great supporters of Acuma. Without them, we would not be able to bring such great content to you like we are today. But also, if you are attending our annual conference, both Mortgage Coach and Sales Boomerang are exhibiting. And also, be sure to catch out Alex as he moderates one of my favorite sessions of the, of the conference, the top five management challenges. He and his panelists are really gonna provide some thought-provoking ideas and tips and tricks to navigate not just today's market, but tomorrow's market as well. You know, before I, I, I turn it over to everyone, I first want to introduce Alex, the co-founder and chief visionary officer with, with Sales Boomerang, Dave, the co-founder and chief innovation officer with Mortgage Coach, and Andrew, the mortgage sales director with Canvas Credit Union. Gentlemen, I'm excited. I'm going to take a step back. Talk to you guys later. Love it. Great intro. Thank you so much. Um, you got me pumped up. Um, and 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 what I want to do is dive right into the conversation. Like Peter said, Andrew and Dave and I are about to walk you guys through some really cool things and share some ideas and inspire some 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 new thinking, maybe challenge some of the things you might be already doing. But let's dive into this with a poll. Okay, so why we start with a poll is because we want you engaged from the start, right? Look at the computer, look at the screen, be be part of this conversation and make sure that you ask questions throughout the entire engagement, right? As we go through polls or ask or having conversations, anything that's on your mind, ask because if it's a question for you, it might be a question for somebody else that's listening. So let's start with this number one poll. What percentage of members actually have a mortgage with their credit union? What do you guys think? Some of you may know the answer. Some of you may just be guessing. It's okay. Let's see where you feel you are. Um, you know, Andrew, while we're waiting for the for the results here and see what everyone's what everyone's put, like, do you have an idea without giving us the answer of of where we are? I believe I have a pretty good idea of where we are. Yeah. That too. Yeah, it's, and it's a and it's actually a, a number that once you guys see the results here, uh, we'll talk about it. It's a number that we are truly trying to impact and multiply significantly. Um, that is uh, one big mission for the credit union community that we have here. So, um, Nicole, let's see what the results are. All right, here we go. Zero people said 100%. Good point. Well done. Um, <laughs> 50 to 99%. Okay. 10% of you thought that. 23% thought it was between 25 and 49. 11 to 24 is 32%. And the largest portion is zero to 10%. Let me tell you guys, that group of you, you guys are spot on. Um, the number is unfortunately a sad 3%. 3% of every one of your members actually has a mortgage with you or every credit union's members across the country, only 3% of all your members have a mortgage with you. And that is something we are looking to change significantly. I wanna see in chat everyone, if this was shocking, if this is new, did you know, like, like get in there, start chatting. Let me know your thoughts. Is this uh, a, a piece of information that's completely shocking to you? And, and here's the thing, right? Um, why, right? Like, why is that? Credit unions, you guys are built for members, like for, for community. And so why is it that consumers are not actually choosing you for their mortgage? We're going to unpack some of that right now. Andrew, do you have any thoughts on that before we, we jump into the first question here? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, I would agree with that sentiment where you're talking about the mis misconception or misanticipation of what we envision our 
members wanting and also actually just missing the mark on marketing to them about the additional services that we provide as a credit union collectively. And oftentimes when we attend real estate conferences or we, as we dive into more of the slide content, we'll hear that more often than not, they don't know that we actually lend in this space, which is a great opportunity right. for us to segment. Yeah. And look, Gary just put into the chat. So keep them coming, guys. We're going to read them like this. Gary said, definitely need to change this. Consumers think we only do car loans. That is that is true. I hear that a lot. And it's about it's. And so you're going to hear in just a moment how being proactive, being in the know is going to um, is going to give you an advantage. And we want to see that number go from a single digit to at least a double digit, I mean, at least, right? Over 100%, we're gonna get triple digits, but at least over 10%, like we should be consistently getting over 10, 20, 30%. All right, so Alex, let's jump. Alex, yeah, go real quick before we jump off this topic, I just wanna, I, I, I can't remember exactly the statement that was used when we opened this, but it is about helping the welfare and the, the financial fitness of consumers uh, there's an affordability crisis in America. There's a financial literacy crisis in America. And as credit unions, you are by members, for members. And so I really feel like seeing that number with a single digit is just a huge missed opportunity to, to really serve the families. And one of the things I love about going to the Kuma events and I love about all the relationships I have in the credit union space is you just care. Like I just, I go to some event and I never see so many executives that just care about the people they serve. And so I, I really think there's a massive opportunity to move the needle here. Um, most credit unions that have home mortgages have really good rates. Uh, you have really good costs and you can really do a major service. So I just, I just think this is not just a good idea for business, it's a good idea for the financial well being of the, the membership to turn these numbers around. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and it should be, it's, it's a combined effort, right? It's a, it's, I like to call it co-creating, right? We need to co-create to get to that 10% and higher double digits and higher. So Andrew, this is a question really for you. Um, and, and, and Dave and I will definitely chime in too. What, what, what challenges are you hearing right now from your members? Like what, what are members saying about what they're experiencing in, in real estate and mortgage right now? Yeah, great question, Alex. Thanks again for the opportunity to be on this webinar. Uh, biggest challenge that we're hearing amongst our membership, and obviously I talk to my team about it quite regularly, is the affordability crisis and challenges that we have. We're in an inflationary period that's the highest it's been in 40 years. Mm. Inventory has hist over the past couple of years has been pretty challenging for us as consumers and members to not get frustrated to when you have an opportunity when you submit a contract to be executed. And unfortunately, it doesn't get accepted. You know, how do you respond? How do you educate? How do you coach somebody if their credit's not there, hypothetically? And how do you get them to say, here's an opportunity that we can't uh, concentrate or focus on today, but we're going to get you somewhere in the near future? So, so you're hearing a lot about affordability right now, and that's that seems to be the biggest challenge. One of those, yes, I would say that's a big commonality amongst our team. Yeah, uh, we'd love to hear from you all. Like, what challenges are you hearing? Right. So, so throw some things in the chat. Let's let's see if we can get a bigger dialogue going here. Um, when when you're dealing with these with these uh, uh, members who are having these challenges, one of the things that happens is not every person is ready to move forward with the mortgage today, or maybe the home they're looking at is, is just, you know, way too many bids and they just don't get it and they have to restart the process. Is one of the challenges that you feel that the, that the credit union community can help with is being a better guide. And we're going to, you know, I'm leading us a little bit here, but you know, when you don't have app, you know, funded next app, but you actually have to stay in touch are you seeing that as a challenge for the for the credit union community? Um, when you have someone that's not ready to go right now, how how is the credit union community being there for them over the time until they are ready? Are you seeing any yeah. any challenges there? I am, Alex. And you know, you and I have talked about this quite regularly when you talk yeah. about the year pertaining to conversion. Uh, I love the the acronym and the selling points that you've said in the past, where it's the year of the conversation, where we have to educate right. the member, right? We have to understand the challenges that they're facing, put ourselves in their position, 
that it can be an intimidating process, you know, and we're here to help guide and educate and support them, give them the tools and resources that they need to calm their fears, put them in a position of where they know that they're in a good spot. At, uh, if they're looking to become a homeowner and to be in a position to have the eligibility for home ownership it is really impactful and Obviously, it's a really rewarding experience when we get to work with one, not multiple members throughout the credit union industry. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. And, and look, Julie, great point. Um, you know, uh, what, what Julie wrote in here, Andrew, and, and audience, if you're not seeing the chat, is consumers right now, your members right now, don't, they don't have the knowledge or guidance. It's a perfect statement, Julie. We're actually going to get to that in just a moment. There's a couple of the rates, refinance, and, and inventory, the affordability of purchase. All of those are challenges. It's how do we create that confidence, that trust? So let's get into some of these things, some of these topics. Um, so what's the most successful way that you communicate to your members? Like, what are you guys doing um, that's making you, you know, so successful in, in, in right now? You guys are the number one credit union in Colorado, correct? Um, uh, we're Third largest credit union in Colorado currently. Oh, third. Okay, um, yep. I'm giving you a lot of a lot of compliments there. We, we don't even know the other two right now. We're you're, you're number one for us. <laughs> um, and so and so the, it it takes it takes a certain type of organization to successfully continue to grow and evolve and scale the way you're scaling. So what is how are you communicating right now to your members and everybody? Take a note here because this is be important. You know we're very conscientious about our brand, right? And the way that we market to our members uh, to go live, right? The most people don't necessarily love banking per se, right? That's not an attractive industry for consumers or a sexy topic that people like to uh, talk about, right? Finances in general, which Alex may allude to, is yep. generally a very difficult and confidential topic that people just are, un are uneasy and nervous about discussing. And so for us, what we're beginning to do is uh, educate our members through more home buying classes. We're getting out in the community, presenting different program options and doing educational opportunities for us to be able to put people in a position to have success, ease their fears, and then more importantly, giving them the platform to come into a branch, come in to meet where our members and or our family members are, and they meet them on their time. Right. So we'll utilize the technological piece that we all have access to meeting members at at a branch like I had alluded to previously. We'll meet them in person and we'll go to their house if that's uh, their desire. But building trust, building credibility are some of the biggest ways for us to, to maximize and improve our communication method amongst our membership. How often are you guys asking your members about their goals and why they're even having this conversation? Great question, Alex. Uh, more often than not, whenever a new member uh, decides to become a member at the credit union, those are some of the big questions that we are uncovering. And then obviously when, uh, when we have a referral partnering opportunity amongst our, our different cross pollination uh, channels, uh, we can identify different areas where we might be able to look at referral opportunities, whether it's, it's a real estate loan, whether it's a consumer product, uh, if they're in a very favorable equity position, right? Those are just things and cues that we'll pick up on when members come in to see us and or we pick up the phone. Yeah, and 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 Dave, I can see you're about to jump into this. I just I just want to actually probably set you up for for one uh, a comment or a thought here. Is it's so it's so critical to have those goal conversations, especially when somebody is is if you're reaching out to a member, um, you know, and and you're engaging, you should be reaching out to a member with something of value, right? Not just to say hello, just for the hello sakes. Although that's not a bad thing once in a while, but you should be adding value. Now, if a, if a member comes to you and they're asking questions about a mortgage, this is where that question of why, what's your goal? Where's the pain? What are we trying to solve here? And it's important, I think, Dave, that you came on just at the right time, because if you're trying to sell a product instead of trying to fix something that's painful for a customer, you're going to lose right? You want to stop talking about the products and you want to start talking about what's important to them. And sometimes what's important to them may not be the product that you're selling and you may offer some guidance. I see Nicole in chat mentioned she refers people over to, to, to uh, a financial partner um, when, when they're speaking to members. That's brilliant. That's the kind of thing you want to be able to do, but you can't get there without asking the right questions. Go ahead, Dave. So, you know, this communication is, it's a, it's a broad topic and I'm going to hit it from two, two sides. And you said it, Alex, you know, one of it is just what, 
what is the loan officer? What's the solution you're providing in the marketplace? And we're in a marketplace where um, affordability is a real problem. It's a real challenge for both real estate agents, consumers, and 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 we'll in a little bit share some strategies in terms of how loan officers are making listings more affordable mm -hmm. with creative finance strategies that that most credit unions have available. Um, but it's also about the the rhythm and the habits of communication. And I interview the country's most successful loan officers. And one of the things I've noticed with the most successful is they they just consistently make outbound communication. And more now than ever, it's not what you say, it's how you communicate it. And it's what to remind everybody to be making sure your, your loan officers and your team are, they're using phone, they're using email, and they're using text. Uh, and when it comes to borrower intelligence and alerts, you know, the things that matter most when you know that a member is most likely to be in need of, mm -hmm. a, of a transaction. You know, the thing I'm seeing the most is that top producers are are making those calls first thing in the morning. You know, they don't want to wake people up in the morning. So, you know, after eight o'clock, but you don't want to let the day get ahead of you. So, you know, write this down. And I just posted an article um, in the Mortgage Coach blog. I'll put a little link to it here. It's also available in our um, Facebook group. But, but the most successful loan officers have built the habit where they're calling that customer signal um, between eight and nine in the morning. And, and so it's just an important communication. And, and remember, if we're gonna move the numbers, then we, yeah. we need to be proactive. You know, we need to, you know, we, how we communicate, when we communicate is really essential to moving the needle and getting into the double digits when it comes to credit unions, um, member penetration. Yeah, very well said, Dave. And look, everyone, um, we'll post some links, just like Dave said. One of the best things every day that your team can do is go to the Mortgage Coach, either Facebook page or YouTube page, and just listen to the top producers. You're talking about people doing hundreds of millions of dollars a year in this environment and in the last, last market that we came from, and they're going to do it in the next market that we're going to go into because they are, this is one of my favorite statements I've ever heard. The market does not dictate your success. The market dictates your strategy. That's it right? It's not responsible for your success. It is responsible for how you shift your strategy. So you guys want to hear some great strategies. You want to hear the best people share their literally scripts, advice, processes, step-by-step. -step. Go check out those channels. Um, you'll, you'll see a link there. Go ahead, Dave. One, one more thing. And for all you managers that are listening to this, you know, I designed that content while it, you know, Alex found it sales boomerang. I founded Mortgage Coach. We've come together to create this sweetest thing. And we're still calling it the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel because we're turning loan officers into mortgage coaches. But it's it's also whatever the best practices are, you know, turning data into dollars, you know, how you turn your data database into an opportunity for your credit union. Those are all covered in this topic. Alex, did you want to say something about the seller buy down or do you want me to go first? No, this is all this is all you. So guys, so look, everyone, we're, we're talking about strategies in, in this in and in, in how to communicate and how do we take that 3% to 6% to 9% to 12% and so and so and so on. It takes education. Remember, one of the key takeaways from here is about education and how do we communicate? There's no better way than presenting a digital presentation to a consumer and explaining exactly what's best for them without having any bias. Meaning, there was a great study, and I'll let Dave get right to this in just a second. There was a great study, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it, or maybe not, but let me just run through it. This was in the 90s, where they took a group of people, they put $10 on the table, and they said, Dave, you're going to decide the split. Alex, you're going to decide if you're going to choose it or not, if you're going to agree to it. And so Dave splits up the money, two, two for Alex, eight for himself, and then Alex goes, no. And then nobody gets the money. And then they had a, th a three and seven, four. And they looked at the percentages of acceptance. So like, how, how often are people accepting, you know, these different ranges? And of course, the most acceptable was $5 for each person, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm in. It was like over 90% said, yeah, let's do it. Then they took the test and they put a little spin on it. They said, you know what? Same $10, but the computer will decide the split. Who gets what? And then you still decide if you accept it or not. And the numbers were staggering. Even one and nine dollars were over eighty percent accepted. Whereas in the past it was like under twenty or under fifteen percent. I can't remember this. Why? This is very important. Why I'm making this point. The reason 
is that they said the computer did not have a bias. The computer did not care about what I look like, how I speak, my, my color, what my hair looks like, if I'm wearing a watch, it didn't care. And so we as humans were like, whoa, well, since it's just making this random decision, I'll accept anything. A dollar is a dollar. So my point is this, a digital presentation takes the bias out. It takes you out of the equation of giving your opinion just to give your opinion. When you have a digital presentation that clearly says, this is the option that's best for you. Let the consumer see it and go, wow, I, I, can, see, I can understand this very clearly. Beautiful presentation and nice and clear. So that's the digital presentation piece. Dave, let's talk about this buy down. Yeah, so if you can stop sharing the screen real quick. Yeah. And I want to I wanna show you guys a, a real world story. And first of all, I would throw out to everyone that we need to, re, we need to change the definition we have for real world, because most people, when they think of, oh, real world experience, that's like physical, like we're in person, we're at an event together, a consumer's meeting with us face to face. Guys, this is an absolute fact. A real world experience in 2022 is a, a digital and physical experience. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we need to redefine like real world is not in person. Uh, physical like physically being in the same place, same time, but real world, it is this hybrid experience. So I'm going to show a couple um, thoughts and I'm going to share a real world strategy of a seller buy down hot off the streets of the mortgage industry in, in Northern California. So first of all, you know, these photos are great examples of real world experiences where, you know, far left, we've got a consumer self-educating first time home buyer in a Pete's coffee shop you know, physical world, but digital world, using a, a device and a screen to educate. You know, in the middle, we have one of America's most successful loan officers in Dallas, Texas, uh, educating some first-time home buyers and using a mobile device. You know, on the far right, we've got literally one of the most successful loan officers in America um, who, this was a pre-COVID photo where had clients come in and meet in person. Now, the majority of the first meetings are on Zoom. There's still in-person physical experiences, but it's this hybrid experience. So now let's bring this to the specific strategy of, of a seller buy down in the real world. So the real world in the physical world, there's a listing and a listing agent and a buyer's agent and a buyer who wants to pay $630,000 for a home that's listed at 700,000. And the, the listing agent for the $700,000 house says, don't bother writing up the offer. Like we're not going to counter it. Like it's, we know we're not going to sell for full price in this market. We know it's softened, but we're just not going to start there. So just, you know, no bother writing the offer. But a modern mortgage coach, top producing loan officer, every credit union in America should be able to have this conversation with the consumer, was able to say, hey, what if? And again, doesn't matter if you don't have two one buy downs. This is a seller funded buy down. What if the seller, column three, was to um, do a three-point buy-down, two-point towards rate? So, you know, whatever the rate is, plus two points, a point towards cash to close. And look at this, guys. We found a compromise. Like, on the far left, that's what the family wanted. In the middle, it's what the buyer wanted. It wasn't going to happen. They found compromise. Just a three-point seller buy-down. And you know what? The seller got more cash to close with this option. The buyer, remember the, that that seller funded buy down, that's a tax write off. And look at the monthly payment. The buyer, you know, what is that? About $110 difference than what they wanted. So, so like everybody won. You know, and when Alex earlier talked about in this market, how we need to, you know, sell the problems we solve, not the programs and the rates that we have. This is just a great example. And what we're seeing in mortgage coach and sales boomerang land in no borrower left behind land is mm -hmm. we're seeing loan officers go out and, and, and teach, train and inspire real estate agents. Hey, I've got a solution for you. Um, it's not for everyone. It's not for every listing. It's not for every buyer. It's not for every situation, but it's, it's education and it's teaching. And so I would love to see my challenges to every credit union loan officer and leader on this call Make sure your loan officers know how to have these conversations. Also, another thing that's very popular is showing um, for every pre-approval, no points or like no cost, 
on up to two points. Make mm -hmm. sure we're giving families options. And that's the beauty about a credit union. You guys have awesome rates and fees. You're extremely competitive. So, so show options, show every pre-approval options, show every first time home buyer a rent versus own analysis. That's for another webinar, but it's it's a, a mission of mine that the credit unions and the credit unions that use mortgage coach and sales boomerang, it is a requirement that first time home buyers get a little financial literacy. They, you know, they understand renting versus owning. So uh, Alex, I'll let you take back the, the screen and if anybody Perfect. has any questions or jump in. Oh, was... all right, Andrew, what are your thoughts on that strategy in your marketplace? Dave, thanks. Uh, yeah, you hit it on the head. That's exactly the paradigm shift that we're starting to reframe how we educate our borrowers and also our realtor partners. We're seeing ways of homes are sitting now that we're seeing a little bit of an increase in inventory, which is nice to see for our borrowers. However, that strategy that you just alluded to, how can we present a scenario where everybody wins, right? Our borrowers, they see the price point that they ideally want versus seeing something tangible and utilizing the tool of mortgage coach is a great way to illustrate exactly how everybody can successfully win in this market. Yeah, and and well said. And look, I think it's so important for everyone to take away a couple of things from, from this. One of those being that presentation. Like you saw things that were highlighted that were important. You saw red colors versus green colors. We've all been trained what is favorable to us when we see green red means maybe there's some questions the entire digital presentation is laid out in such a way that we go back to our adolescence where we were most comfortable learning that way and when we're confident listen this is the key and i'm going to jump right back into this presentation three times faster decision making think about that for a minute when you are informed you are confident in making a decision okay and so Give people a chance to be informed and make that decision. Dave has an awesome, maybe you can throw it up throw for just a second. It's really funny too. throw that quote up from uh, from your Marine for just a second. All right, guys. So so one of the, one of my favorite things to do in mortgage coach land is is read um, reviews and testimonials of what um, of what families say about the loan officer and the value they got. And so I, I collect these. I mean, we have hundreds of them uh but this this is my favorite and uh or at least my favorite last year and i'm gonna read it aloud this is a active duty um a marine who said the time you know the the time you spent with me explaining my loans with a mortgage coach presentation you put together makes me want to find the past two lenders i worked with and punch them in the face so <laughs> i i i'm not advocate advocating violence nope. and, and 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 that's not my goal is to get Marines and military to want to beat up loan officers. But, <laughs> but here's here's what I do want to do. I, I do want to really instill on you as a leader of mortgage professionals, you as a leader of, of a, a, a mortgage group that serves the families you serve, to give them such great advice at the point of sale when it comes to their mortgage advice, that they literally, like, they're just pissed that they did a loan with anyone but your credit union. Uh, and they and they and they want to continue to do their mortgage with the credit union. So it's a it's a community thing. So uh anyways, and an I experience love thing. Yeah, I love I love that. It's so it's so important. I have my own experience with that. I'll share with you guys as well, uh, maybe a little bit down down the road here. But it's so important that the experience you create, that if they go anywhere else, they go, I want that experience again. Like if if I'm not getting that, you set a new standard, it's it's that is the goal. When you can set the standard of, wow, I love working with my loan officer. I love working with my credit union. I am truly happy to get this advice and make sound decisions. I'm not doing it any other way. That's the goal. You want to get past the 3%, get to 10%, 20% of your, of your members always using you for mortgage, you create that kind of experience. So what is the best way to meet your members where they are in life right now, Andrew? You guys are so good at this too. Um, you know, how are you staying connected? Meaning, how are you being approachable and and knowing how to help your, your, your members? Yeah, great question, Alex. You know, what I would say collectively amongst our organization is that 
we're always looking for lifestyle events. That's a big indicator that may change, right? There may be a college, uh, a child getting ready to go off to college, uh, somebody that purchased a home that now might need, that might be in a favorable equity position, uh, might be the time for us to get in front of them and talk to them about ways that we can utilize and leverage that equity. Uh, if there's a divorce situation that that happens, that whether uh, unfortunately or in a situation that we weren't anticipating, we're there to educate and be the sounding board and to, first and foremost to listen to our members with what where they're at in life and then to be able to identify solutions and external strategies that we can deploy to help allow them to better afford life. And, and what Andrew is talking about is getting intelligence okay member intelligence like what when when you know somebody just got married or had a baby or there was a death or a divorce or some kids are going to college this is where canvas is not guessing <laughs> they're not just guessing there is intelligence there there's a process because um and i think i actually just took this note today let me see if i can find it real quick i thought it was an awesome oh i i love this and dave i think you said it um actually i know you said it and i wrote it down right away you said, show them that you know them. Show them that you know them. That might be the next shirt, by the way. Show them <laughs> that you know them means don't call and, and just guess. Be ready. Show them that you know them. Do a little research. Look into your, into your member's profile. When was the last time they did something with you? Um, when you're getting insights on, on, your, on your customer base and you know that you can offer value, dig in a little bit, take two minutes, to take a look at what's going on, two minutes to look at notes, two minutes to just find out what was the previous experience. Can you find out, and Andrew, maybe you can tell me this in, in Canvas, um, am I, as, as, a, as an originator, able to see if they have a, a savings account with me, if they have a credit card, like can, can I as a loan officer see that with your system? Yep, absolutely. They've got the intelligence to have a conversation with our member to allow them to make recommendations per their particular situation. Hey, so, Alex, can I share my screen real quick? Yeah, sure. And I just put a little comment. In go, ahead, there. go ahead and finish your thought. And then I have something to share. Yeah. So, so you saw me just post data is the new dollar, right? There's, if you are a loan officer or you're a manager of loan, or you own a credit union, whatever it is, show them that you know them means you're, you're, understanding why you're even having the conversation and believe me when your member goes wow how did how did he or she remember that or my goodness that's a really good point that I, I do remember having that conversation it changes the trust level through the roof instead of oh i'm talking to somebody from my credit union they must be selling me something or every time i want to talk to them about mortgage they're just getting into the application they don't even know why i'm getting so when you know you care and when you care People care back. It's a mirror. It comes back, right? So uh, very important. And, and I love, and I'm handing this over to you in just a second, Dave. Andrew, the fact that that your loan officers can take a look and see all the different services that are that they're currently utilizing uh, through the credit union, that is something that's key to bring to the conversation. How's that going? How's this going? How's that going? Right? Asking questions already about experiences that they've had with your credit union brings them closer to you, makes them walk to you instead of you chasing them. All right? So you want to create that experience. Go ahead, Dave. So I just wanted to give a little tactical feedback and, a, and an idea. This came from a, an interview of a loan officer I recently did. And, and this scripting is also shared that article I shared, but let's just, this is just one of many borrower intelligent insights where we have signals, you know, we, we know that there's a realtor listing or a for sale by owner, and we turn that into an insight. And this is an example of a script from a, a loan officer that's going to do about 140 million in production this year, super successful loan officer. And you notice step one is, is just verifying the listing through, through Zillow or the MLS. So what's he doing? He's getting to know the situation. He's like, okay, just want to verify that's there. Might see a picture. That can be done in 15 to 45 seconds. Two, I want to re-familiarize myself. And again, this is an alert from his past customer database or his prospect database. And he's getting this signal that an alert went out. He wants to re-familiarize himself with that transaction. And, and then he goes to his database. Again, be a data first mortgage professional, make sure you're using your CRM, make sure you're putting notes in and then, and then make the call, you know, but, but by the time he's spent that, and, and I'm talking a minute to two minutes, 
now it's time to make the call and and then call the agent you know every time you get some borrower intelligence it's like okay there's consumer value but there's also real estate agent value mm -hmm. so i'm not going to read this out loud you guys can take a picture of this uh this scripting and some of these details are in that article that i shared a link to you but the hopefully the takeaways is just some tactics some clear things to do from a show them you know them that's what the best salespeople do before they talk to a consumer they like they know something they've checked them out on facebook they they maybe they looked at them on linkedin they spent a minute or two to show them they know them and then they're using that within their conversation uh all right alex what do we got here we got more signals yeah, we got more signals and more more insights. And this is and this is what we're talking about. When we say show them that you know, it's having activity, having something that watches every event in your customer base, right? We talk about data is the new dollar. That's because every piece of information you get gives you the chance to overserve your member and that member wants to do business with you over and over again. So, it takes a little bit of data and then through a little bit of magic turns into a dollar, right? And so what kind of insights, what kind of knowledge do you need to have? These are, this is a, a, a pretty large list of information, but it's all critical information for your business. Meaning you want to get from 3% to 10%. You want to wow your members. You want to see your business grow on the mortgage side. You got to know when somebody's listing their home for sale, when somebody's getting married or getting divorced, what's happening with the rates? Where are my rates compared to what they they have currently, right? Something needs to alert you when something changes, right? Who in my in my customer base is, is perfectly suited for, for reverse because I know where they are in their life. I know what the benefits are, right? How do we get these notifications? That's what Sales Boomerang is here for. It's here to tell you when a member is ready for a loan and which loan they're ready for, right? And so I want to hear from you guys in chat. You guys have been pretty quiet for the last 10 minutes. We we must be wowing you, uh, but I want to hear from you. Are you all getting these insights? Do you know that one of your members just pulled their credit for a mortgage? Do you know that you may have an early payoff before you actually get an early payoff? Are you getting alerts, flags, letting you know, hey, get with this customer before you have penalties, right? Are you are you seeing all the demographics on your on your members, right? Do you know all the different aspects of who they are and what's important to them by seeing the demo, seeing exactly who they are through the data lens, right? This is what it takes. This is what, and, and you know, we'll, we'll, oh, I thought there's a, there's a slide coming up that will show you what some of the biggest lenders in the country use to have some of this information and how you all have access to even better tools and resources than the the biggest like the rockets of the world right and so let me pause here for a second andrew when you and and we've been working together so you know how has your team been engaging and and how has business changed ever since you started getting insights and intelligence on your database well, yeah, Alex, I would say first and foremost, it's an incredible tool that we can provide to our members, not only for our loan officers, is being able to alert our members exactly when they may not even be thinking of us. They may have their credit pulled by another financial institution. And as Dave has alluded to as well, we need to provide value and be proactive in reaching out with engagement to our members to uh, help them know that we're here for them. We value their membership. That's why we're in business. We align with why they need to serve we serve the communities and all of our members in and around the surrounding areas so for us we want to capitalize on all these non-credit type alerts similar like we've talked about here on this slide the database intelligence is just a great way for us to approach the conversation to meet our member where they are and and approach it as a service related outreach call you know it's it's a soft sell to thank them for their business, uh, the relationship with the credit union, we value that uh, exponentially. And how can we provide more value? Uh, and this is a way how to do it. So and, I, want, I want to make sure everybody caught that it's a service outreach, you know, that okay. these are yeah. looked upon as services. And as a technology entrepreneur, my entire adult life, and when I founded Mortgage Coach was, was built on this premise, is that there are certain things in the sales and marketing process that if they're done well, they're done consistently and they're done at scale, it's service. It's world-class, exceptional service. Uh, and that's and that's what we've done here um, in partnership with Andrew. Now, now here's the deal. There's the technology part and then there's the people part. That's right. And, and, and part of that service. And then there's 
how do we amplify that? How do we go from these alerts are not only valuable to the borrower and the member, but how can we make these alerts valuable to the realtor? And, and I would tell everybody in you know credit union land right now, I believe that there's a massive opportunity in this market for you to for you to get more, more brain share power with real estate agents because you have very competitive programs. Oh yeah. You're local. And if you're using technology like this, you're using mortgage coach, you're using sales boomerang, you're using tools that make you a fintech powered lender. And, and that's something I'm very proud of. We work really hard to come up with packages and proposals just for the credit union space. That's right. you know, we, we feel like the credit union space, does, there's a lot of technology companies that the way they price and the way they support, it's not really even realistic for credit unions to, to do business with us. But we, you know, we have this no borrower left behind mantra. We want no loan officer left behind, no local bank, no credit union. So Andrew, I do want to ask you just, you know, it, it, I think you laid it out pretty clear how you are using this borrower intelligence to win with members and borrowers, but what about with realtors? You know, how do you get that value where the way your loan officers do business, that literally realtors would be better off giving their own databases, like their database would be more valuable in your database? One, do you believe that? And two, what are you doing to bring these superpowers that you and your credit union have to the agent community? Yeah, great question, Dave. Yes, uh, I'm a big advocate for both these uh, data analytic tools that we can provide. One, not only as you've alluded to from the loan officer standpoint to leverage uh, technology, to be more equipped, to meet our members where they are, uh, but two, having the technology and to be able to provide value to our realtors that generally are looking for information. And as we all go through and we're meeting with realtors, and I know there's a slide upcoming, uh, which we'll talk about more in depth, but how are, how are we differentiating ourselves in the market to help them grow their business, right? What are the challenges that they face? And how are we gonna be able to provide value? Because ultimately, if we're gonna continue to provide value, as Alex alluded to earlier, they're going to think of us first, right? Yes. We're not in it to just get a quick sale. We're in it from a relationship standpoint to help them be successful. And in return, we're all going to win. Love, love that answer. Back yeah. to you, Alex. And I know we've got a few more slides here. Yeah. Um, so, so look, I think, I think it's very important to understand too, that when you are all, when you're getting this intelligence, right? When we're talking about over-serving, we're talking about taking from 3% to above 10%. This is why you hear Dave and I um, really pushing on this. You hear Andrew really pushing on this. One of the key things about knowing your, show them that you know them is you can get to the member before the member gets to the market. Okay, write that down. Remember that you can get to the member before the member gets to the market. And remember, 80% of people are still choosing the first person they speak with as their lender. So how do you make yourself first? And a lot of the things that we were sharing earlier um, and let me see, I just, I was just jumping around over here. A lot of things were, this is about getting to your member before the member gets to the market. So just know that you want to keep elevating the game. If you want to, I, I saw Nicole, you put into, um, um, you put into chat, Hey, credit unions are small and we can't really afford, uh, solutions like mortgage coach. Um, I, I would encourage you to reach out to us and see what types of things we're doing for credit unions, right? Um, we're doing some special things and Nicole and everyone listening, when you're using resources like this, when you have this mindset um, of, of investing in yourself, betting on yourself, okay, things like Mortgage Coach will increase your volume. Things like Sales Boomerang will absolutely increase your volume. And so when you say we can't afford to, it's the opposite. You can't afford not to. You can't afford not to be a data-driven, insights-driven uh, lending institution. You can't afford not to know what's happening with your customers. You can't afford to just guess, right? And so don't think about the 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 dollars going in, right? It's in investment in yourself, in your members, in your community, in your bank, in your in your uh, uh, credit union. It's it's you want. That's why it says investment. And so make that investment. Bet on yourself. Give everyone on your team the chance to really compete. Because if we go forward here for just a minute, I, I do want to ask some of these questions. If we go forward for just a minute and we look at things like this, right, where 
exactly what Nicole was talking about. You have large institutions that have tons of money and, and data science teams, and they could just do these things. Guess what? We've taken this unattainable concept that only the biggest and the best can do, or so we thought, and we've made it commercially available, and it's optimized to actually exceed the results than what you see from groups like this, because they're just getting alerts. That's it. You are getting signals, insights, and strategies, signals, insights, and strategies. And so this is this is where you want to start to bet on yourself and giving yourself that advantage, okay? So, Nicole, I just wanted to address your question since you brought it up, and I'm sure other people have some, some, uh, some questions as well. So I know we're running uh, close to the end here, so I want to make sure that we cover uh, a, a few topics right now. Uh, let me, let's go into this poll for just one second. Okay. So one, one last poll, and then we're going to jump into a couple of questions that you guys already got a preview for just a second ago. So answer this for us, please look at your screen, answer this question, which is, are you confident that your credit union has the tools and resources to help you achieve your goals? Are you confident about that? You may be that credit union. You may be the leader, the manager, the owner that's listening to this right now. Be honest. Are you giving your team all the resources and tools that they need? Don't think about the money for just a minute. Just think about the, the concept of are you giving the tools? Are you confident that your team or you have everything you need to be able to go out there, overserve your community, give people sound advice, and have the intelligence that you need to overserve by showing them that you actually know them? Right. So answer that question first. Are you confident? All right, Nicole, let's see what the results are of this one. Yeah. And if you have another answer instead of yes or no, put it into put it into chat. All right. So 85 percent of you are saying, no, we're not confident. Look, um, this is not this is not a, 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 a shock. Right. It is. It is the reason we ask this question is, again, to bring awareness, shake up that tree a little bit, bring awareness to you guys, because Here's Dave, here, here I am, here's Andrew. We are speaking to you, our community, our Craigian community, and we are shouting that you have resources, you have tools, you have partners that can help you help your team to help you help your members. Uh, again, Andrew, I sort of asked this question al already, um, but let's, let's really unpack what are you guys doing that's working right now, right? And then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit future casting here. How are you looking at 2023, the first quarter? Like what are, what's already on your mind for the first quarter of 23? Yeah, great questions, Alex. I would say right now, we're already thinking about 2023, right? As we approach Q4 here, which is only a couple of weeks away. And in order for us to position ourselves to be successful for Q1, uh, we have to take action now, right? We have to deploy strategies and tactics that are gonna put us in the best position to be successful, not only individually, but collectively as a department. And, and utilizing that uh, with the tools of Sales Boomerang has been vital and instrumental to our some of our success uh, for people picking up the phone and making that outreach, right? We're utilizing Mortgage Coach, the digital presentation to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace when we're talking to our prospective buyers, right? And so what we're doing right now is, as we've seen, uh, everybody's volume has shifted this year in 2022. It's, it, we, can all, uh, we can all acknowledge that. And so from our perspective, how we position ourselves in the marketplace now is to do the little things up front, right? Focus on a pre-approval, uh, making sure that we clear assets, clear income, clear credit. We do a full pre-approval up front so we can position ourselves to say, hey, uh, Mr. Listing Agent or Ms. Ms. Listing Agent, our bar, we're, we're calling you right now to let you know we've got a very highly qualified borrower who's going to be submitting an offer on this potential property that you have. Please note, we've already done X, Y, and Z. And if you have any additional questions, uh, I'm happy here to share that with you. And again, we tie that back into some videos that we can illustrate through our TCA analysis. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the TCA, it's a total cost analysis that we use through Mortgage Coach. Uh, hands down, it is a game changer and differentiator between a traditional standardized estimated fees worksheet. It allows you to customize and edit the link and send it to the member triggers notifications when the member has read that 
And also if they have additional questions and as Alex and I alluded to last week, we had lunch. It's just really cool to see how engaged members are when they receive that link. Mm -hmm. And then they start playing around with it and asking additional questions that all of a sudden allows us to better capture uh, that relationship and cultivate uh, a future long-term member. I hey, love it. Alex, if I can share my screen one last sure. time before Absolutely. we run out of time. We so, love when you share a screen, Dave. So, so guys, I, I know you can see some gray hairs here, but I, I, <laughs> I've been doing this business for a while. Like this is my 36th year in the business. And, and I want to share just some thoughts over 36 years of the business and some very specific suggestions going forward for every credit union. So guys, this is a picture of me 30 years ago, uh, you know, about five years before I founded Mortgage Coach and I landed on my advice makes a difference. And 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 this was my first CRM. You know, this was <laughs> computer. So you notice I got the computer up there, you know, but this was this was a few years before that. And I fell in love with technology because of spell check. Uh, but 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 I want everyone to just think. And if you've been in the business for any length of period of time, this was the first fee worksheet. You know, it was a yellow sheet of paper. I still use sheets of paper to take notes, but they're not great presentations. Well, in 1990 or 1989, this was admitted a, for a fee worksheet, and 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 that was a big deal in the in the late 80s and throughout the 90s. But it's 2022, and 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 it has been disrupted, and and every credit union has a choice. Do we want to keep giving the same presentation, rates, fees, cash to close to our members? Is that the best way to serve a member? Or it's 2022. You can give a link and, and you can really empower that consumer with financial literacy. And 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 here's, here's the deal. Like the first time a credit union loan officer does a total cost analysis, it's difficult because all things are difficult until they're easy. You know, when, when you turn on a borrower intelligence platform and you go from a database with no signals to a database with signals, like who's most likely to want to do a refinance, cash out refi, who is out, you know, applying for mortgages, like that's even a new skill and a new habit, but, but something that we're dedicated to at Mortgage Coaching Sales Boomerang is to make this easy, make this affordable for credit unions so that every family who gets into debt, they get a link. Like guys, anyone watching this, you got your through a link. We live in a link economy. And so mm -hmm. it's important, you know, most apps, I don't know if it's most yet. Yeah, I think it's most apps are taken with a link. And, mm -hmm. and that link is, is valuable because you could view alerts when a consumer clicks on it, you're getting an alert. You could actually have a live experience where you could highlight and educate, you can put a video on it, you can brand. So I just wanna you know, put that whole like story in a montage, 36 years of the mortgage industry. And the challenge is too many loan officers in the industry are still quoting rates. Like the print song said, it's 1999. And, <laughs> and, 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 and you know what, for IMBs and pure profit driven loan officers, I don't think it's good for their best interest. Like, I think it's not a good move because they're not optimizing their conversion. They're not making as much money as they can. But my cry out to, to credit unions, I would just say it's it's not what the consumer wants. It's not in the best interest of the consumer. The consumer wants a link. The consumer wants a little bit of education every time they get into debt. And, and, and think about this, guys. There is a financial literacy crisis in America who better than credit unions to put a stop to it? Oh, the best. Like if every credit union started making sure that every first time home buyer got a rent versus up, a little financial literacy. Every time you're gonna refinance, you're gonna look at options. Every time you're gonna buy a home, you're gonna you're gonna look at different rate and fee options, you're gonna look at a move up analysis. If if they worked with a credit union that was looking out for their best interest, like all these borrower intelligence, these are service alerts. Hey. I'm your credit union. I want to be here to help you. Um, here's the deal, guys. The credit union industry could put a dent into financial literacy in America. Um, and I know you guys are doing it already. You have a lot of classes. You do a lot of community outreaches. But, but I would just put the push that every time you do a liability transaction for a consumer and the mortgage is 
the biggest, give a little bit of financial education. Right. Andrew, anything you want to say to that? No, love it, Dave. I think that's a, a great way to articulate the message. Uh, we're here to serve. And what better way to serve than to provide tools and resources that are going to allow our members to make better informed decisions. And, and you got, and, and the credit union community is the best financial model in this, in this country. Like you're in this for your community. It's clear. It's, it's, it's part of, it's part of your mission. And so I think right now we've talked about that a lot of people come in for, for a credit union experience because of a car loan. Okay. That's great. That's, that's, that's a lot more than a mortgage company can say. Think about that. Think about the advantage, right? A mortgage company says, I can sell you a mortgage. That's all I got. You all have so much more off. So just because somebody comes into your credit union because of a car, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But you can't know how you can help them if you don't know them, right? You got to know them. You got to know your members and you got to have this, this, again, remember the data is the new dollar. You need data to let you know who you can serve and how you can serve them. Get out there, get in front of it. You guys are more trusted than any other financial institutions in the country. Another advantage, lowest interest rates, most trusted, there for the community, more than one reason to, to call you. You should be winning. And so here are the tools to help you win. Here are the strategies. You just heard Andrew share some amazing strategies as to how they're taking care of business. They're contacting the realtor every single time, letting them know that they've already presented a, a, an option that makes perfect sense. There's, they're communicating with the community and their members, and they're clear, and it's purposeful. So live purposeful, right? Make sound decisions, invest in yourself, bet on yourself. Um, and I'm just going to go all the way to the end here. So um, we can have our, our uh, ourselves up here one last time. I thought, yep, there's our emails. I wanted to have that up there because look, if you have questions for Andrew, the reason he's on this call is he's available for the community. So if you have questions on how he's utilizing tools and resources, training, what are they doing to continue to win and be a top lender in their in their uh, state? What what's what's the strategies? Contact them, Dave, myself. Um, look, reach out to us. If you're like, hey, we're too small. We don't know if we can afford to do this. Talk to us. It starts with a conversation. Every single person on this call, if you aren't getting insights, if you aren't doing digital presentations, if you aren't over-serving your members, reach out to everyone on this panel. Let every one of us give you some advice, give you some suggestions. Um, it could be, hey, let's turn on the service. It could be, let's turn you to, to somewhere else and give you some, you know, you want to start here before you come over here. So just reach out to us. And, and we're here to help. So Andrew, any parting words, any last thoughts? Uh, I really appreciated the time today. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And obviously for those of you that are going to be attending Acuma next week, oh, yeah. I look forward to the opportunity of meeting you in person. Hey, Alex, let me share my screen one more time. Uh oh, he, so, he couldn't, couldn't help himself. He needs I to just couldn't <laughs> help I know, I said, you know, I, I guess I did say last time, last time. <laughs> but, but you know guys this when you click the link you know we put a link in chat and you click on that link you know it's all about how do you save members money while creating new opportunities uh for the member base so it's real simple you just click on that link put in your name put in your email and 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 here's what we're always about at sales boomerang and mortgage coach it's about service we want to make sure that a sales conversation with us a demo is value. Now we want you to invest in our platform because uh, we think we're changing the world. We think we're leaving no borrowers behind. We're we're helping put a dent in financial literacy. Um, you know, our whole vision is that when borrowers get into debt, they're not getting into debt because they want debt. They're getting into debt because they want homes. That's right. And they, and, and they don't want loans on homes. They want homes free and clear. And, and that's the beauty of a credit union. You guys care about the financial well-being. You care about helping people build wealth with real estate. And so um, learn more about us. We, we really want to help the credit union space. We believe that between how we've um, developed our, our, our pricing, how we're going to market with you, we're, we're really giving no excuse for a credit union not to have borrower intelligence so that you can give these services calls so that you can have digital presentations, so that you can have better conversion rates, you can close more business. But most importantly, you know, we can just help families um, when it comes to financial well-being. So thanks for signing up. 
make sure you click on those links, learn more about us. And um, Alex, Andrew, any closing thoughts? Yeah, no, beautifully said, Dave. Um, I, I'm I'm just grateful that we're able to serve this community. It's one, it's 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 the and Peter. I've spoken to Peter about this. Um, the 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 previous president as well that we are just so grateful that we finally got to a place where we can offer so much support to this community. This is um, the community that's doing amazing things for this country uh, financially. So again, thank you, everybody. Love the participation. Click those links, learn more. We will see you in Las Vegas for Acuma Conference.